So, I'll be heading off to Brazil in the morning. I'm gonna be spending a month in the Amazon. I'm now gonna to have to spend the next bit of time getting all of this into here. I reckon I can do it. So, uh, back from my trip to Brazil. Man, in total we covered 10,000 kilometers. So that's the equivalent of driving from one side of China to Beijing and then going all the way back again. Okay, so what I'm gonna be talking about in this, this film is one of the challenges that I face as an independent filmmaker. So I need to cover a lot of different situations uh, with my equipment. Uh, but it needs to pack down, it needs to be light, I need to be able to carry it onto a plane and sometimes I'm trekking, sometimes uh, I'm in a car. Uh, I also need to be filming wildlife, you know, I need to be using you know, long lenses like this uh, to get shots of birds up in canopy, uh, mammals that, you know, far away across a grassy plain. When I travel, I have one check-in bag and then two carry-on bags and that's it. Uh, I need everything to pack down into the weight allowance of the, of the plane. I need it to be small enough that I can pack it into a bag. Uh, but I need all, I need to cover all the different situations that I'm gonna be recording. One of, the, one of the main challenges that I have is how to get all my shots in all these different situations stable and smooth. You know, that's one of the biggest challenges that as filmmakers uh, we have is just, just, just to get that rock steady, smooth, dramatic footage. Uh, it's not got any camera shake in it. So I think for me, I think I've figured out uh, the perfect combination of equipment to get stable footage in all the different situations that I'm gonna be filming in. And I'm just gonna run through what, uh, what, what those uh, pieces of equipment are that I use. Okay, so let's start with, with the setup that I use mostly for shooting wildlife. Um, so I need to be using a big lens, uh, relatively big, you know, for example, like this 150 to 600 mil Sigma lens uh, in order to get shots of, of wildlife. You know, obviously they're gonna be far away a lot of the time. So uh, I need to have a strong, stable uh, tripod system. It's, that's gonna hold the weight of the, of the camera and the lens. And it also needs to be super buttery smooth because I'm using these long focal distances. So small amounts of movement at my end are gonna translate into big amounts of distance there. So for this setup, uh, I'm not too worried so much about the weight. I just need it to support my, my camera and I need it to be uh, super buttery smooth. So I use this light uh, eye footage um, fast bowl tripod system. It packs up super light, super small. Uh, and it's just rock steady as well. It's got this, um, it's got this super handy quick release system here, so I can quickly set it up um, with my uh, with my fluid head there, and I use my my heavy big Manfrotto uh, fluid head on it, uh, and so that's really for the situations where I just need to be getting. Uh, the most steady, the most stable footage possible. Okay, this second setup here, uh, the iFootage Cobra Strike 2, I found I use this a lot more than I ever thought I was going to, uh, simply because it's just so versatile. So when I'm doing the kind of run and gun type shots, you know, I'm filming uh, researchers, for example, whilst they're doing their thing, uh, and I need to be super mobile, I need to be super light, I need to move around all the time. Uh, this thing works super well for me. You know, it's flexible, it extends out super quickly, easily. I can move it around. Um, but there's also a lot of interesting things that I found you can do with this thing. And I'm just gonna show you right now. Is you can use, you can quickly detach this head here. And this just acts as like a bit of a counterweight to your camera. So, um, I can use my neck strap with my camera down below me. And this thing just adding a bit of a weight to the bottom of my camera. I use an A7S II, so they're pretty light and they they move around a bit if I haven't got a tripod system uh, or some kind of stabilizer. So 
having a bit of extra weight to it with this head here. It's not very heavy, but it's a little bit extra that just pulls the camera down. So I can also use this handle here with the camera to pan around, to tilt, using my body as a tripod, uh, and it's super light, super mobile. I'm super surprised with some of the shots I got with it. Uh, you know, some of the other surprising things I found you can do is you can actually use this thing as a kind of slider. So you can have, I can have the camera attached right here. And I can use this thing to, like, to extend out, to pull back in. Normally when I'm shooting in slow motion, get some really interesting shots. Okay, so check this out. I can combine this monopod here with a gimbal. And this is, gets super interesting when you do this. So I've attached a quick release plate to the bottom of this gimbal here. So I can slide this straight on and lock it up. So now I've got this super interesting motorized rig. So I can extend this out, get kind of crane shots from way up above, I can move it around like this. I can even take, it, take advantage of this handle here, pulling it up, pulling it down. It's super handy. And of course I can just pop it off like this, super quickly. Take it off with the uh, quick release plate if I need to. So I can disassemble it from up here. I can take the, uh, the fluid head off um, with this little attachment here. And I can also take off the bottom little tripod feet. Okay, now I can combine them with this thing here. And okay, so normally I would have thought, ah oh, man, like when am I ever gonna actually use this? I've found this is super handy for when I'm getting time lapses, especially with like the night sky. I just want it to be super low down, getting shots of the stars. I'm gonna attach my camera up here and I can just leave this out in the landscape somewhere. Uh, and yeah, so handy. So of course, um, I've also, I also used my gimbal setup. Quite often I find I'm using this when uh, for very sort of specific shots I've got in mind uh, when I'm walking through a forest uh, or a landscape and I just want to like bring the person into that world. I want to get environmental shots, you know, trees, leaves. It's super interesting that I found that this is almost a replacement for the gimbal. Uh, you know, in times when I just don't have it, you know, it's it, it works surprisingly well. I'm able to get those tracking shots forwards and backwards, uh, you know, panning around. But the gimbal really does just come into its own for certain kinds of shots and yeah, I just find that you can't really replace it. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So with these three setups, I guess, you know, using a monopod, using a tripod, using a gimbal, I'm more or less able to get all the kind of shots that I want to get uh, in, in all the situations I find when I'm filming uh, out in forests, uh, savannas, uh, mountains. Weight-wise, all of this equipment uh, is, is pretty good. It's actually really light. It packs down really small um, and it packs down into one suitcase. Um, that more or less seems to cover all the things that I need to do when I'm traveling abroad. So I hope that it can be of use to you. Um, I'd love to know if you find some other uh, setups, some other situations which you don't think that these things cover, whether you've got some insights. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.